This is my Fallon officer's Pulcra, who has just been living la vida on the mount since we mounted her earlier in this season. Um, yeah, well, I've changed my mind. I have to get that cakey off because it's grown so, so well. I need to get it off to pot it up. Otherwise, I'm gonna really, really struggle during the winter. So I hope that you're up for it. There's gonna be a fiddle. I believe two roots are attached. <gasps> Not sure how this is gonna go, but we have plenty of other roots. She should be fine. Let's get her off the mount and into a pot and have her grow independently. Thank you for still being here. I appreciate it. Thank you for your interest and possibly your concern because if I am a little bit concerned about this operation, I would not put it past you to be concerned about it either. So you can see that here, there's a beautiful root tip, but it's loose, thank goodness. So we've got root tips to work with if I mess around too much with the ones that are in here. These two are my concern. I believe this one still isn't quite attached. Let me change the angle, at least, no? Let's see if I can't get you in as close as possible. Back when I did the whole mount update, I was saying it's gonna stay on the mount. I was not going to take it off. I wish I could stick to that plan, but we have had a super humid summer here in Southern Spain. And for that reason, the pulcra is also doing sensationally well with all her root growth. Also already attaching to the mount of their own volition, which is awesome. But the handling of this orchid during the winter is gonna be far too cumbersome with that keiki, with the root tips. So my only reasoning for removing this cakey is to make my life easier during the winter months it's purely selfish otherwise if my night temperatures would be nice enough for her to live outside all year round this cakey would stay on the mount what i'm doing is taking parts of the cork off just small pieces so that i can get at a root tip that is curling in the back here i'm just poking my knife into the cork and lifting off layers just to expose that root tip that's coming right here. I probably just sliced it, which would be a real shame. But you see, this is why for years I opted for inorganic mounts, because the damage to orchid roots when you do try to remove something is exponential. And while I could have done this much, much sooner before these roots reached this stage, well, I changed my mind and here we are. Yeah, I damaged that root tip. You can see where I poke through it. Quel dommage. We have collateral damage, but we also have other root tips that are gonna be okay. And we still have time for the remainder of the season. It's still gonna be warm enough for the keiki to actually develop and grow in the pot. You see this little crevice here? It was all fun and games while I wanted the keiki on the mount. <laughs> now it's working against me and there's a root that is hydrating beautifully, but I do believe that it's growing through this crevice and up and right into the depths of the mount there. I can see it, you probably can't, for which I apologize. But what I'm trying to do is see if that is the actual root that is moving up the mount without crushing the root that is behind it. But if this is the root that is in there, then it is deeply, deeply embedded. It has taken on the shape of the crevice. Let me remove this handy dandy contraption that I made that held the cake in place back in the day. You know what this reminds me of when I was growing strawberry patches? <laughs> Cutting the runners and saving them to grow on as well. <laughs> but that was so much easier. So that's only this one root left right now. And the branch, oh, watch the, ooh, you see the root tips? Root tips, root tips. I'm gonna have to scooch the tripod back a bit. Yeah, that root's not gonna come, not willingly. 
I can hear some crunching. I'm probably doing a lot of damage, but we'll give it a go. Now that we're here, now that it is actually budging. Oh, and I can smell the damage of a root. The fresh green, you know? Cut grass damage. That's what I can smell, so what a shame. Oh well. Ta-da! There you go. That's the damage I did there. That's a pity. I will cut that off. This root tip was trying to embed itself. And here's the branch. Right, we have ourselves a Phalaenopsis pulchra, all independent and such. Let's get her potted up. Ooh, and another root tip coming. <laughs> That's great. Yay. It's probably going to go aerial, but hey, at least we've got all this that we can work with and put into a pot. Oh, look at this. Just a quick discovery. Look, I missed a root tip. <gasps> oh, that is awful. Look, oh, please like the video. Please make me feel better. I am so sorry that I missed this root tip. I can't believe it. <gasps> oh, what a shame. This is not a good day on the patio. Want to make me feel better though? Please like the video and consider subscribing to the channel as well. I've got two pulchres now, one mounted and one soon to be potted up. Let's follow their progress together. I am using medium to large sized lava rock for this project because I don't want the evaporative cooling effect from Lekka. Phalaenopsis pulchras like to have their feet warm. 20 degrees minimum is her preferred temperature. Well, <laughs> my winters dropped to 14 degrees Celsius, so no lecker for this one, lava rock instead, because this way I avoid the evaporative cooling effect. I'm going to need a little bit more water because my container is going to be self-watering. Now, while lava rock doesn't have any wicking properties, I am still using large to medium sized lava rock. There will be enough consistent moisture around the roots because the pot is so small. It is only around 12 centimeters in diameter. And I got ahead of myself. I already filled up the bottom with lava rock, anticipating that I knew what I was doing with regards to the height of the orchid that I want her at in her final position. So I hope I gauged that correctly because we don't want to be damaging any more roots. And if we can avoid any fur baby hairs in there right from the get-go, that'd be great. So while some are still not taking up water, others are. So that's a good thing when it comes to potting up a keiki to have some roots that are already absorbing water. Now, I am contemplating not cutting off this little stem here because I'm hoping that the orchid will use the energy in that stem to absorb that. And then once it is all yellow, dried and obsolete, I'll be very happy to get rid of it. And then I'm gonna be placing my lava rock around the roots that are huh, very, very delicate, very, very gently using the water, the buoyancy of the water, to make sure I do it without crushing any velamen. And while this might look pedantic and seem a bit overboard, if I were to pour the lava rock in, it would crush the velamen because it is large and medium-sized lava rock. There's considerable weight to it. And if pieces pour one on top of the other, the abrasive nature of lava rock will, in actual fact, damage the velamen. And then it's probably not a good start for this little one in a pot environment. So doing it one by one, yes, the weight will accumulate with every piece of rock that lands on it, but it is a gradual increase of weight and not an all-in-one-go dump. And we are going to need these roots in here because pulchra is such a happy root grower that it grows roots all up and down the stem, and these are not exactly the easiest orchids to keep in a pot with their root systems. My climate is usually extremely dry. I've had an exceptionally high humidity summer, which is awesome, but I am not counting on the fact that that's gonna happen year in, year out. 
I'm just going to go with what I know to be the norm, which is 12-15% humidity during the summer. Of course, higher during the winter, but that comes with cold temperatures, not ideal. So I'm going to give this orchid at least a standing chance with viable roots in the pot, and then whatever roots grow afterwards all over the place will just hopefully have healthy roots that do in some rare cases have a tendency to branch. It is not normal for this orchid to have a branching root system. So every little teeny bit is needed, required, and must be preserved. You may now see the water level rising because I'm adding the media into the pot and you can see slowly the stem is being submerged, which is not something I would recommend long-term for any monopodial orchid, but in this case, it is still early enough in the day and she will be in a nice, bright shade, breezy area of the patio where she will dry out. And I still have nice temperatures at night. My pulchra can still live outside during the night, so it's all going to be just fine if that stem gets a little bit damp. There's one root tip I really want to encourage to go down into the pot right here. So what we're going to do is put some lava rock on top of it. This way it shouldn't be popping up and escaping from us. And this is how I pot up a Phalaenopsis cakey into large lava rock with a self-watering setup. And that will work because the pot is small. Yes, I have broken some root tips and lost part of a root. It is inevitable when dealing with orchids that are mounted. I should have done this before any of the roots touched the mount. But anyway, she is looking wonderful and I hope from here on in, she will continue to grow well for us. And that little root tip coming out at the base. Yeah, that's probably going to go aerial. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope there are some pointers in here that you can take and apply in your own collection. Know that I appreciate your time watching. Know that I appreciate that you like the video and that you are subscribed to the channel. I wish you a fabulous day. On that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.